0.6% of the world's population. The now United lives. Nations listed a number of factors affecting the world's population. This include slower world population growth due to lower fertility rates. Future population growth is highly dependent on the path that future fertility will take as relatively small changes in fertility behavior when projected over decades than generate large differences in total population. In recent years, fertility has declined in virtually all areas of the world, even in Africa, where fertility levels remain the highest of any major area. In contrast to the growth projections, a significant aging of the population in the next several decades is projected for most regions starting with Europe where 34% of the population is projected to be over 60 years old by 2050. In Latin America, the Caribbean and in Asia, the population will be transformed from having 11% to 12% of people over 60 years old today to more than 25% by 2050. For many countries today, and probably for most countries in the long run, the major concern about their demographic situation will be in relation to population aging, not population growth. Trends in individual countries tend to fluctuate, but we anticipate that substantial levels of international migration will continue in the future, and that migration will continue to be the leading force of population change for some countries in future decades. Africa has the youngest age distribution of any major area but it is also projected to age rapidly, with the population aged 60 years or over rising from 5% today to 9% by 2050. The slowdown in population growth due to the overall reduction in fertility causes the proportion of older persons to increase over time. Globally, the number of persons aged 60 or above is expected to more than double by 2050 and more than triple by 2100. Life expectancy at birth has increased significantly in the least developed countries in recent years. The six-year average gain in life expectancy among the poorest countries from 56 years in 2000 to 2005 to 62 years in 2010 to 2015 has roughly doubled the increase recorded for the rest of the world, while significant differences in life expectancy across major areas and income groups are projected to continue, they are expected to diminish significantly by the year 2045 and 2050. Currently, the average woman is having around two and a half children over her lifetime, but this number varies widely around the world. Africa has the highest fertility level with around 4.7 children per woman. Even assuming a continued decline in fertility, given this high starting point, we should anticipate a continued rapid growth of the African population, which will roughly double in size between now and 2050. Progress in reducing under five mortality, one of the MDG targets, has been very significant and wide reaching in recent years. Between 2000 and 2005, and 2010 and 2015, under five mortality fell by more than 30% in 86 countries of which 13 countries saw a decline of more than 50%. In terms of performance with the MDGs, everybody would say we made progress. We made progress in the sense that where we were in 2000 is not where we are now. But we're not exactly where we should have been. I don't know if, this, if that captures it. We made progress from where we were, but we are not where we should have been. So that is, that is for me the, the sum of how we perform with the, with the MDGs. A lot of things happened relating to the MDGs. A lot of things happened relating to, you know, specific investments in sectors that will improve the lives of people that make sure Nigeria trended towards the achieve, achieving the goals, but we're quite far from, you know, from the uh, desire, from what we should have, where we should have been by now. On the downside, the world is seeing a record number of people displaced by crisis some 60 million according to the latest United Nations figures. The United Nations Population Fund works in emergency settings around the globe to respond to the rights and needs of women and girls, helping them maintain their dignity, securing their safety and restoring their access to sexual and reproductive health care.
In Africa, children under age 15 account for 41% of the population in 2015, and young persons aged 15 to 24 account for a further 19%. Latin America and the Caribbean and Asia, which have seen greater declines in fertility, have smaller 3% of children and similar percentages of youth in total. These three regions are home to 1.7 billion children and 1.1 billion young persons in 2015. These children and young people are future workers and parents who can help to build a brighter future for their countries, providing them with health care, education and employment opportunities, particularly in the poorest countries and groups, will be a critical focus of the new sustainable development agenda. Our asks are basic. Uh, one, every child has a right. We are asking for universal health coverage. We are asking for education. We are asking for nutrition. Now, all these, if you ask me, are about the child. But again, for that to happen, we also have to put systems in place to ensure that the mother, who is the one to take care of the child, is taken care of. So what we have, we actually have like a project that looks at, um, so kind of is a protection, social protection project, we'll call it. And it looks at tr cash transfer, unconditional cash transfer. The only thing you need to qualify as a woman is that you're pregnant and that you have a test that says positive to qualify for that. Because the mother too needs nutrition in order to have a healthy pregnancy, to have a healthy child, and to be able to take off, uh, care of that child to a large extent. But what we are trying to do now is to advocate so that the government takes over that cash transfer because it won't be sustainable if it's just the development organizations that are doing it. Because if America says they're no longer funding us, for instance, what happens? We'll go back to the way things were before. So for us, everything we are doing is looking at is a holistic approach to ensure that there's a healthy family. So that from that healthy family comes a healthy child and a healthy leader at the end of the day. According to the United Nations Secretary General, not since the end of the Second World War have so many people been forced from their homes across the planet, with nearly 60 million individuals having fled conflict or disaster. Women and adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable. Violent extremists and armed groups are committing terrible abuses that result in trauma, unintended pregnancy and infection with HIV and other diseases. Experts advocate at the same time that we must continuously advance women's human rights in times of both turmoil and calm in order to enable them to help avert conflict, stand strong should it strike, and foster the healing that is so badly needed in war-torn societies. All we can do is to advocate to government to ensure that they put their resources together. If you need help from the international community, feel free to ask for it and come and stem what is going on in our own country. Then for those that have already been affected, those in the IDPs, let's start thinking of ways, strategies, so that they can be reabsorbed into the communities. Uh, and even while they are there, because the truth is when it comes to nation rebuilding, it's going to take a while. This is no problem that can be solved in the next couple of months or in the next one year. So some of the things you're looking at now, education in emergencies, that should be one area of focus for government right now. For those kids who are in, in, in the IDPs, how do they have access to education even while they're in the, in the camps? Then what do we do to even protect the schools from armed conflict? Those are the things we need to see government doing from now moving forward to ensure that at least in the next couple of years, we'll be able to rebuild their lives, you know, and bring them back, incorporate them back into the society. current global population of over 7 billion is already two or three times higher than the sustainable level. Several recent studies show that Earth's resources are enough to sustain only about 2 billion people at a European standard of living. Currently, over 7 billion of us are consuming about 50% more resources than Earth is producing during any given time period. For example, in the past 12 months, we have consumed the resources that it took the planet about 18 months to produce.
according to the 2015 revision of the world population prospect, future population growth is highly dependent on the path of future fertility, as relatively small changes in fertility can, as projected over the decades, generate large differences in total population. In recent years, fertility has declined in almost all parts of the world, while life expectancy has increased significantly in the poorest countries, rising from 56 to 62 since the beginning of the century. Declining fertility and rising life expectancy mean the world is getting greyer, and most regions will have an aging population, starting with Europe where one-third of the population is projected to be over 60 by 2050. Globally, the number of people aged 80 or over, currently 125 million, is projected to more than triple by 2050 and to increase more than seven times by 2100. But populations in many regions are still young in Africa. Children under 15 account for two-fifths of the population. Well, as we look at the issues surrounding the increase in population, we're reminded of our common responsibility to build a more sustainable and just future. Remember, the care of our planet is our responsibility, all of us together. Don't forget our inbox at channelstv.com is always available for your comments and questions. We always appreciate hearing from you. We hope to be back with you next week. From all of us here in Lagos, it's bye for now.